Welcome friends, this is another edition of TiffinCast. I'm your host, Sei Shu. Today, I'm speaking with Rachel Branke, who's a photographer and a lawyer, and who runs a blog, a wonderful blog called The Law Talk. And I wanted to talk to Rachel about her business and what got her motivated and how she's out there helping photographers make it through this legal maze that sometimes we get caught up in. Rachel, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to see, to finally, finally, finally get finally. you on here. And it took, took us a year. Um, our schedules were all crazy. Um, I, my first question, Rachel, is really a very simple one. So how did you get involved in both being, well, you were an attorney before, and now you're a photographer, and so you decided to put those two things together? I mean, how, was it a, just an easy marriage, or was it a, was an obvious choice? How did, what, what decided, what, what made you decide to get into this? Well, when I went to law school, I had no intention of being a photographer. It wasn't really um, professionally. I was doing a hobby and learning and all that sorts of stuff. And then during law school, um, it's quite expensive. And I needed to find a way to help to support my family because I had quit working full time. And we had children, obviously still have the children. <laughs> but we um, so anyways, I ended up building the photography business during law school. Uh, and then when I came out the other side, I just decided to combine the two. I was actually a business consultant prior to going to law school. I had my MBA as well. So I worked with non-creatives at the time, mostly in the real estate business. Uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Then the bubble kind of burst. And uh, when I went to law school, I fully intended on being a child abuse advocate. And it's something I still love to do on the side and I'm interested in, but I kind of just combined the photography love and I saw that there was a real big need for a some legal guidance in the photography field, especially with the massive influx of new business photographers. Indeed. Um, uh, I know when I first started working as a photographer, um, I probably never even considered a contract. I never even considered, you know, wanting to have uh, even a portrait client sign a contract and it's, it's so sort of alien to most photographers mm -hmm. um, how do you how do you figure people should be convinced that you know it's a good idea to have contracts for everything that they do and they deliver well, you know, I, I, I'm the first person to admit that legal stuff and contracts aren't sexy. You know, the marketing and the learning of the camera is so much more fun. I get that. And I'm a lawyer, you know, and I say that it just I don't know if there is convincing other than putting the word out there. And that's my entire goal with the law talk is to l let people know that these potential situations lurk out there, that this isn't a fly by the seat of your pants thing to run a business it's for real and my goal is to keep people from doing and getting in trouble with um, the uh, government and fines and fees and getting potentially shut down or sued because then it's too late at that point so as long as I can raise the awareness as much as possible uh, I think that that's the that's the most convincing I think you can do um, for business owners do you, do you uh, use uh, case studies where uh, photographers have either had to deal with uh, clients uh, in the past or uh, are currently working with through some legal issues with clients at all or, or is, that, is that a is that a possibility at all that you you you'd share those stories with us or do you feel like that's a little too too heavy-handed no, not necessarily. It's funny you say that because I've actually been working. It's one of the projects I've been working on is because my inbox is basically like 500 case studies a day. I mean, there's so many different things that come through my in uh, my inbox that I want to share. A lot of my blog posts and webinars and stuff arise out of the most popular questions I get. But I do end up bringing out those little specific things because when it comes to law, and you can see this in forums, people will ask a question and you'll get the same stock answers. And for me, and that's actually one of the reasons that I really started the law talk was because I was seeing these wrong responses from other business owners because from the legal side, one factor can change an entire situation. So yeah, I've been looking at putting case studies out there. When I teach, I'll give examples that are as similar as possible. You know, I mean, all teaching styles pretty much take real world experiences and legal is one of those that re you really need to have it. Um, all my research is founded on, I start with experience and then I branch out to 
uh, to case law and stuff that's already out there. Do you find things have changed since you've left law school? Things have changed uh, quite a bit for photographers? Or do you feel like things are somewhat the same and, you know, we're, we're all actually pretty much SOL because we are not <laughs> really following any of the and the rules that we are supposed to be following. I don't know if it's changed or if my eyes are just being opened more. So I don't know what the answer to that is. Is it just because everybody comes to me now and I see the issues that people don't necessarily post in forums? Because my inbox is essentially like, whew, of all these people having issues or, you know, we've got some who want to prevent the issues. So I kind of have a good mixture of both. So is it that we're having more issues? Potentially, uh, but for me, I think it's also just because I'm exposed to it a lot more. I do think that because of the influx of newer photographers and because the lot, the contracts and stuff aren't se as sexy and that most people don't know where to go, they kind of just push that under the rug. Um, and I think that is becoming more and more common. Uh, and it just, it's, it's kind of, it's sad. It makes me hurt. I literally hurt when I think about, cause I know what it's like, obviously to start up my own business and to think that that person's business could be gone like that. Um, you know, all right. All right. Um, here's a question for, for you as a photographer. Um, let's say I, I do have a, a set of legal forms that I want to have my clients sign and, you know, we've just established a relationship We've just said, hey, listen, we're going to have a great time at your, let's say it's a family portrait session, and I'm going to come over to your house and photograph you guys, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But, by the way, I need you to sign these legal documents. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like there might, be any, there might be some sort of a pushback from the clients when legal documents are, are introduced into the conversation? I think it kind of depends on the timeline and your approach. Um, you know, many people know my personality. I'm very strong, very type A. I would tell everything. I'm very upfront. But when it comes to contracts and money, it's really hard for me to look clients in the face. So I like to front load all that information as much as possible. So it's not like, surprise, here you go. Here's the contract and here's the methods in order to be able to book me. Uh, one of the very first things that when they ask for pricing or information, they're not just getting that. They're also being educated on what's going to happen next. I mean, that's just a customer service thing. That's just educating clients. But it's also allowing me to squeeze in that contract so that it being like, here's this legal form. Um, so, it, you know, and I think it also having photography contracts, especially when you rise up in the dollar value and the dollar amount that you place on your collections and your services, it lends a lot more professionalism, especially working in weddings and commercial type work, because then your clients feel a lot more confidence with you. They see that you're professional. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that can add to that, but contracts end up being one of the frontline things that someone can look at and see if you're truly a professional or um, or not. That's a great point. I, I've never considered that, uh, honestly. Um, when it comes to those contracts, uh, and let's say they, they do have uh, some concerns um, about the signing of the contracts or even the language of the contracts, what would be one quick way to encourage them and, and sort of uh, diffuse any sort of uh, ill will from them uh, at all. I mean, is there a way that you you would approach a client and say, listen, this is this is for your benefit and mine mm -hmm. as well. I mean, is there a way that you couch those words in, in a certain well, it way? Kind of, it kind of depends on what they're having to push back on. If it's the contract in general, and I say it just like how we're talking. I talk to my clients just like this. I say, here's the contract. This is needed in order to secure me for services. This is to protect both of us because it's going to have privacy things for you, it's going to have things for my business and policies outlined and so that we're on the same page, literally, <laughs> and that we're able to move forward without any issues. I've, I've personally never had an issue with clients um, giving me pushback on a contract. And that's not because I'm a lawyer. Many don't know my photography side don't know that I'm a lawyer until, you know, we discuss and we talk about it later. When it gets into specific provisions, one of the big ones that comes through my inbox is ownership of files mm -hmm. and of mm -hmm. who owns. And really, all it boils down to, whether it's that provision or any other, is client education. It's the photographer knowing what's in their actual contract, not just blindly having one mm -hmm. and being unable to explain it. Because if you understand it, 
A, you're going to be better protected, but you're also going to be able to explain it in a way that is beneficial for both parties. For example, with the copyright issue, many times clients really don't want to own the photos, but they don't know what else to call it. Right. Um, and like I said, just how I'm talking to you is how I talk to my clients. And I, if they have a question about that, I will say to them, you know, the copyright provision basically just states that I own the photographs. However, you know, with your collections, you're purchasing a print release. You're getting an unlimited license to print for yourself. If you want to print a big your face on a sweatshirt for Aunt Judy in Seattle, go for it. You can do, you can print with all these guidelines right here, but I'm going to own it. And all that just means is that I have ownership rights. And if they want to continue the conversation... I'm more than happy to sit down and give a copyright 101 lesson. <laughs> By then, most of the time, they just realize, okay, I'm getting the printing, and that's all they want. They don't right. really want ownership, per se. Right. Um, you've been at this for how many years now with LawTog? The Law Talk itself was just rebranded within the last two years. I've been doing consulting since 2005 or six. Do you find, um, in your experience and in, in your time in the business, are there any common issues that keep coming up um, time and time again when it comes to when it comes to photography? Um, as far as client pushback or just in general? In general, in general, is there any sort of th anything that's out there that just just won't go away? Um, a lot of it. <laughs> one of the most common ones recently is people not taking retainers. Um, to secure services, and then they're missing out on clients. Clients aren't taking them seriously. I mean, I think there's a whole host of factors that play into that. That's a big one. Another one is the copyright. Photographers that are entering or hearing or they don't know the difference between copyright and print release, they're giving away copyrights and not realizing what they're doing, um, or they're giving – bending to the pressures of the clients because the clients are giving that pushback and they don't know how to adequately educate them. Um, I mean, there, there's all sorts of issues that arise, but nothing like glaringly other than basically co photographers not having a contract. Them not adequately looking at what they need to have in the contract. A lot of times I see them sharing them in forums and I'll check out the contract and see what it's about. I don't butt my nose in and I probably should because sometimes I look at this language and all I can think was, oh, I hope they're not using this. Um, whether it's really poorly drafted against them or it wouldn't hold up in court because someone just piecemealed a contract together, that's almost as damaging, if not more damaging, than not having one at all. I know you offer contracts through the law talk. Um, I do. I, I, I'm, I'm just curious, though, you know, given that um, we have 50 states in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, and each state has its own funky rules, state rules mm -hmm. and uh, state laws, um, how do your contracts blend from one state to the next? I mean, or even sometimes one county to the next. Mm -hmm. uh, are they, I mean, you are offering boilerplate contracts in a sense, right? In a sense, correct. They are, uh, majority of law is built on what's called common law. And that's sort of the principles that we learn in law school that are not readily apparent that are often missing in contracts written by people that are not attorneys because they don't know that. So mine are written on common law principles that gets the structure and the foundation across the board. They can be utilized as is, but the point that you brought up was that sometimes there are little specific things, you know, different from state to state. So my recommendation, and of course, legally, I have to tell everyone, always check with your local attorney. Right. And then the question I always get is, well, why would I buy your contracts if I'm going to go to an attorney anyways? Well, I'll tell you a couple of reasons. Um, one is that you can reduce your attorney drafting fee um, because you're going to have to have a consultation time, drafting fee, revision time, and delivery of product. Right then, you've already racked up how many billable hours with an attorney as opposed to just a revision time. Um, and attorney rates vary across the United States. Uh, another reason that I also strongly suggest, whether it's for myself or um, and other individuals that cater to creatives, such as photographers that draft contracts, as long as they're barred, there's some out there that are not barred that are selling them. Um, but we won't get into that. Uh, is oh, why, that... Don't, why, why don't we get into that? 
<laughs> we, yeah, we, we can get on the, let me, let me finish this point though. Sure, I'm sure. glad to talk about that. Sure. Um, no, but another uh, reason to also get a contract from an individual that has done the photography side is that they have a perspective that normal attorneys won't necessarily have. I have an individual that works with me. He's an attorney. We graduated to law school together. He was valedictorian. He is fantastic at business transactional work. So he's the person that my contracts go through a multi-level review, you know, just to make sure that I have an objective eye, yada, yada. And so I don't know how many times he'll come back to me and go, you know, if a photographer had walked in today, I would have never known to put X, Y, and Z in there because he's never run a photography business. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. And so even if you purchase my contracts and to go take them to be revised, you're bringing a plethora of information to an attorney that may not necessarily have the photography knowledge, but they have the business transactional and it kind of helps them to meet together. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Should we talk about barred and non-barred? There's, Contract um, writers? Yes, there's a, there's a lot of businesses out there who have jumped on the bandwagon of selling contracts. Great, because we need it. Um, but not great that I can only think of two other companies. I'm not going to name them, but I can only think of other two other companies that, act, that I know for sure um, that barred attorneys have drafted their contracts than my, other than myself. And um, I can name probably about 10 that have not. And it's really sad. Um, it hurts. Um, it hurts my little baby heart because I, I just know that people think they're protected and then what if something happens? Um, explain to me though, I, I, maybe I, I don't know the, the nuances between barred and non-barred. Mm -hmm. Obviously barred means you went through law school, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you, you passed the bar exam, uh, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, right? Correct. Yes, I uh, yeah. have. Okay. And non-barred is you may not be a lawyer at all and you've just started to, to sell contracts is that possible well um yeah te technically you can um so barred yes you've gone to law school and you've sat for a bar in one of, one or multiple of the states uh which i have and then um non-bar can either be someone that's never gone to law school or drafting these and those are typically the ones i have found that are charging about 20 or 30 dollars obviously get what you pay for but then the other level of non-barred could be someone that goes to law school but never necessarily takes the bar, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. They've got the education. They just don't have that professional certification backing behind them because they've never passed. Gotcha. Um, but, you know, and I'm, I'm glad you brought up that point because though sometimes I'm finding that people are selling contracts that were drafted by barred attorneys, right. but they, they're not supposed to be selling them. They're actually work product of that attorney. Uh -huh. And so for me, it's kind of the same as the clients buying a digital file from me and turning around and selling it to someone else. That's not their work to sell. Gotcha. Right. Well, this has all been very, very, very educational. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I'm, I'm so glad we waited an, a whole year to do this I uh, because I think uh, I've asked all the questions that I've had in my mind for all this time. Um, Rachel, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. I uh, look forward to uh, continuing to work with you and Law Talk in the future. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Take care. Good night. Good night.